thank you in advance for watching. This is our First Holy Communion, sixth Sunday of Easter homily, YouTube version. We had some sound issues during the actual Mass, and uh, given the nature of what I wanted to focus on, I thought it just best to uh, speak directly into the camera this time. So, it's always tricky having a, a First Holy Communion message because it's so easy to preach about something that goes right over the head of a second grader. And there is something I have to share, which I think most of us can wrap our heads around it. And that message is this. The Eucharist is the sacrifice of Christ at the altar. It's very, very special. Bread and wine become the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Body, blood, soul, and divinity. And nothing else in reality works that way, so a lot of people have trouble understanding or believing what the church teaches about this. And what I want you to understand today is that the Eucharist is not magic. The Eucharist is not magic. A priest is not a sorcerer casting a spell. We are actually literally trained not to do that while we're in a seminary. Get our elbows out. Holy priest, evil wizard. Holy priest, got to get those elbows up. And the reason we say that so sincerely, that it's not magic, is because magic is the belief that outside forces can be controlled and harnessed by human beings. So when you're watching a, a fantasy TV show or movie, the wizard can shoot lightning from his fingers, he can create artificial darkness, maybe he can fly. That, that stuff is magic. It's cool. It's magic. But the problem with that is I don't really believe in magic. And by that I mean it's not that I think it's impossible. That's not the point. When I say I don't believe in magic, I mean... I don't believe that outside forces should be controlled by human beings. That is a bad idea. Case in point, tornadoes. A tornado is definitely an outside force, a literal force of nature, and a powerful one at that. So if there's anybody, you know, watching this, if you're divorced or if you've had a really nasty breakup in the past, how would you feel if your ex could literally control tornadoes? Pretty sure that's bad news. That's disastrously bad news. Uh, there's one ex-girlfriend from college in particular I think of, and man, if she could literally control tornadoes, I'd be, uh, I'd be in a little bit of trouble. Maybe time to move. Maybe change my name while I'm at it. As human beings, we're not meant to control things that are more powerful than us. We're meant to respect things that are more powerful than us. So that means nature in the case of, you know, the tornado. But it also means God. We don't control God. Therefore, we don't do magic. It, it is that simple. What we're doing is we cooperate with God. The Eucharist isn't a spell, it's a gift. It's a gift that we enjoy because we are in cooperation with God. The Holy Spirit comes down and consecrates the bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ. And consecrate means with the sacred consecration. So, bread plus wine plus the sanctity of the Holy Spirit equals the body and blood of of Jesus Christ. That's the recipe, if you will. Worship and magic are just not the same thing. And so this leaves me with one last thing to mention before we uh, move on from here. If the priest isn't in control, you know, which is definitely the point I'm making here, if we're not really in control, then how do we know the Eucharist isn't just ordinary bread and wine as it was prior to the Mass? And the answer to that is, 
We know it's the Eucharist because Christ loves us. He keeps his word. That was the gospel reading essentially for that Sunday. As long as we gather in faith, the priest does his job properly. Do this in memory of me. And when bread and wine are used, just like at the Last Supper, the Holy Spirit will descend upon the altar and sanctify the gifts of bread and wine to the body and blood of Christ. Christ loves us beyond our wildest dreams. We just have to remain in his love. The Eucharist is there for us always because Christ wants us to remain in his love. He has promised to be with us always. And he asked us, we say it's, you know, his, his last request, do this in memory of me. The Last Supper, that is the Eucharist. When we do that in spirit and in truth, Christ will be with us because we know that Christ doesn't break his promises. How do we know it's the Eucharist? By faith that Christ keeps his word and will be with us always. So for anyone that is preparing for First Communion or uh, is, is new to receiving communion, just remember, it won't taste any different than it was before. It's not the taste that makes it special. It's the spirit of Christ that makes it special. And when we take and eat that body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ himself, we are consecrated we are with the sacredness of God himself. <laughs>